This lecture is on IC assembly, and IC assembly refers to the protection and electrical connection of the uh, IC circuit. Um, you may recall from last lecture that after the integrated circuit is placed on the silicon wafer, uh, this is what the wafer looks like. And again, each one of these little rectangles, there's probably, you know, a few hundred on this uh, single wafer. Well, each rectangle is an integrated, an individual integrated circuit. And that individual integrated circuit is called a die. <coughs> Excuse me, a D-I-E, die. And um, each one of the dies is cut out of uh, this wafer with a diamond saw. And then that's where IC assembly begins is with the individual die. All right, so IC assembly is all about uh, connecting that individual IC uh, to the package pins, and uh, then those package pins are then connected to uh, the print circuit board. So here in this diagram, see here's the electrical connection between uh, the IC circuit and the pin of the IC and then of course the pin of the IC is affixed to the print circuit board with uh, solder. So we're concentrating on in this lecture the connection between the IC circuit and the pin of the package of the IC. Um, also you want to protect uh, that IC circuit. It's very fragile silicon um, the silicon wafer is, is, is glass-like. It's very uh, fragile. So it needs to be uh, encapsulated okay, to protect it from uh, physical damage from the outside environment. And uh, you need to heat sink it okay, to uh, dissipate any uh, heat. So in this picture, um, the hash mark here, that's the encapsulation material. And as we'll talk about, that's most often a plastic and then um, the IC circuit sits on top of a copper slug and that copper is uh, its purpose is to uh, take heat away from that IC circuit okay, to keep it uh, cool. And as I mentioned this uh, IC assembly it happens after the wafer fat and after those individual dies those individual integrated circuits have been cut from the wafer. Now, uh, these are the various, uh, what are called interconnection labels, uh, or excuse me, interconnection levels. So just to um, see how this lecture fits in when it comes to uh, the interconnections. Uh, see this level, or the connections talked about in this lecture are referred to as level one uh, connections. And again, those are the connections between um, the IC circuit and the package leads of uh, the package leads of the IC um, level zero the wafer connections that was talked about in the IC fab lecture okay and that's what's discussed in the silicon uh, run video and level two we talked about that with PCB assembly that's when you're making connections from the IC package to the circuit board and then there's a level three uh, interconnection when you have board to board connection and also board to chassis uh, components. Okay, this is the entire IC assembly process, but in this lecture, just due to time, um, we're going to concentrate on the uh, processes where you see the red arrows. So die attach, wire bonding. Now there's additional um, techniques besides wire bonding that's used that are listed down here that we'll also talk about. Okay, there's an interconnection technique called TAB, which stands for Tape Automated Bonding, and also a flip chip uh, interconnection. So this block here, wire bond, also includes these other methods of interconnection. And that's interconnection between, again, the silicon wafer or the silicon IC circuit and uh, the package pins. And then encapsulation and, and also testing. Okay, so first of all, um, 
the dye, okay, that individual IC circuit is heat sinked again with some copper and the way it's attached to the copper slug that provides the heat sink is with an adhesive such as an epoxy material. So this is a picture just showing uh, the individual IC circuit, okay, again called a dye, attached to the copper slug with epoxy. Okay, that's this um, white material that you see between the IC and the um, in the copper below. And then um, also in this picture you can see interconnections here. These wires, okay, are connecting to pads on the IC circuit and then these wires connect to the pins of the IC package. Okay, and we'll talk more about uh, these interconnections. These are actually wire bonds. Okay, so there's several different methods of electri electrically connecting that silicon uh, circuit uh, to the package pins. Um, there's wire bonding, and as, na as the name implies, it's using wire to bond to make the connection between the IC circuit and the package pins. There's also uh, what's referred to as TAB, tape automated bonding. Okay, and this is where metal, uh, most often copper, is embedded in some polymer tape and then that's used to uh, make the connections. And then there's flip chip where the silicon um, integrated circuit is actually flipped where the active side is down and then it's directly bonded um, either to the package or sometimes directly to uh, the printed circuit board itself. So we're going to talk about each one of these three interconnection methods in more detail. Okay, so first, uh, wire bonding. Uh, this is most often done with either gold or aluminum wire. Um, there's two types of bonds. Uh, there's what's called ball bonding and wedge bonding. Um, ball bonding by far is the most popular. Uh, wedge bonding usually is only for, or is used for, uh, primarily when a component um, dissipates uh, a lot of power, like um, a lot of times wedge bonding is used with uh, power transistors, okay, not so much with uh, integrated circuits. Okay, so ball bonding is, is the most popular with uh, ICs. And then there's various bonding methods with these uh, that's used with the wire bonding. Um, now of these, the thermosonic and the ultrasonic uh, are the most popular. Okay, and this is where heat and pressure, along with vibration, is being applied simultaneously. Uh, thermal compression just involves heat and pressure, but it's rarely ever used because it's been found that including uh, some, some vibration along with the heat and pressure actually makes a better bond. And the big advantages to wire bonding and the reason why you know, it has a such high percentage the ball bonding uh, does is because it's cheap and um, it's very easy to make changes. Okay, and I have a video showing a wire bonding machine. You'll see uh, that it's um, programmable, okay, that you can program um, the machine to make whatever connections uh, you desire to make. And it's very easy to make changes because all you have to do is just change the program. Now, the big disadvantage is disadvantages with wire bonding is that because you have these wire lengths and you'll see in a picture coming up you know um, how much length of wire you can have between uh, the connections well it increases uh, impedance and in EE113 we don't talk about impedance that's actually an AC uh, topic but you can think of impedance as being resistance and um, when you increase or have an increase in resistance like this um, because of the length of the wire, well, it introdu introduces time delays, and therefore this type of bonding is not suited for you know high-speed applications. So here's some pictures of uh, the different bonds. Here's uh, ball bonding. Here's some wedge bonding. Like I mentioned, wedge bonding is primarily used for uh, applications where the device is, uh, you know, has a need to dissipate, uh, you know, more power. So the wedge bonds uh, fit into that because they have more surface area and therefore can dissipate more heat than the ball bonds can't. And then here's a picture showing 
uh, some wire bonds going from the pads of the silicon integrated circuit over to pads that are going to connect to the pins of the IC package. So you can see here there's you know a length that's involved and that's what makes it a disadvantage to you know high-speed applications like you know you wouldn't see um, wire bonding and you know um, microprocessors. All right, here's a video that will show a machine that's making the wire bonds. So you can see, um, you know, it's going back and forth between the silicon circuit that's here and uh, the pads that go to uh, the pins of the uh, package of the IC. And these machines, it kind of looks like it's knitting, <laughs> um, are programmable. So again, it's very easy to make changes if um, a change had to be made. It's just a matter of changing the program that drives that uh, wire bonding machine. Okay, so then another uh, method of interconnection is uh, TAB, okay, tape automated bonding. And what TAB is, is that you have your connections, okay, which are uh, thin copper um, leads that's embedded in some polymer tape. Okay, so it's it's this copper embedded in the polymer that's going between the the pads of the uh, IC package and the silicon wafer circuit. And the leads that are within the polymer are chemically etched before the embedded they're embedded in the polymer. So this is similar to uh, when you etch a printed circuit board. Okay, that these um, you know, the lead pattern uh, is etched the same way as a print circuit board uh, is etched. So the advantages of tape automated bonding is that it's more suited to high volume uh, production, okay, because you can make simultaneous connections and also the wire lengths are somewhat shorter than the wire bonding, okay, so it shortens time delays. So this type of interconnection is more conducive to uh, high frequency applications, but you'll see that the last interconnection uh, method we'll talk about, flip chip, is actually the the optimum f the optimum for high frequency applications, like what's typically uh, used with a uh, microprocessor. Okay, the disadvantages of t of tab is that it's expensive automation that's involved, and also it's not easy to change the connections because the connections these um, you know, the lead pattern is actually uh, etched like a printed circuit board. So you would have to go through the same process as, you know, changing the design of a printed circuit board uh, to change this etch pattern, which um, is not as easy as, you know, say with the wire bonding, because again, with the wire bonding, it's just a matter of changing a program. This is a much involved, a much more involved process to make changes. Okay, here's a sketch of uh, this is like a side view of a tab connection now uh, with the tab type of interconnection you need to have these bumps okay above or placed on the uh, the pads of the silicon uh, IC circuit okay and this is just to give room for the connection uh, to be made you know to clear this uh, this substrate of the uh, silicon circuit. So this is a side view just showing one connection, but you know, there would be multiple uh, beam leads in this one uh, piece of polymer. So there's multiple uh, beam leads within a polymer uh, coating. And you know, you would just place uh, the ends of these beam leads onto each of the bumps Okay, that are on the pads of the silicon wafer circuit, and then there's a device that can bond all those beam leads to all these bumps uh, simultaneously. So again, you can make uh, connections all at once as opposed to one at a time, like with the wire bonder. Okay, well these bumps that are used to uh, make the, uh, you know, to raise the connection above the surface of the silicon wafer circuit 
um, they're called metallurgical bumps okay and that's because the bumps are all not just one material they consist of different layers of metals and the reason for this is to prevent uh, what's called diffusion that just like when you put ink in water uh, the ink disperses through the water well on the atomic level when you put two dissimilar metals together that type of dispersion happens at the atomic level and it leads to um, connections that are that are likely to corrode and crack and, and not have good bonding so this metallurgical uh, method of um, making the bumps of various metals it prevents these these bad things here from happening so as an example see here's an example and there's many there's many different um, examples of this so this is just one of, of many different examples but here's an example of uh, you want to bond a gold wire to an aluminum pad well if you made um, the bond directly from the gold metal to the aluminum pad you'd, you'd have that um, diffusion occurring and you'd have corrosion and, and an unstable uh, mechanical connection so instead what is done is what's shown here that in between the aluminum pad and where the gold wire is well first there's a layer of crony chromium then copper and then gold okay so then you're bonding the gold to the gold so you don't have um, you know the case of, of bonding to similar metals and the reason for the progression here instead of just putting gold right on top of the aluminum is that chromium is similar in atomic structure as aluminum is and then copper is similar to the atomic structure of chromium, chromium 